Assalamu alaikum, hello and welcome. I'm Farah Khalif and this is Self Care Chats with Farah where we inspire personal growth by sharing diverse experiences that will positively charge and transform mindsets to love and appreciate oneself. In today's episode, I am joined by Aisha Khan, who is an award winning young Muslim mother and journalist. Um, she is named amongst the the 100 top 100 most influential Muslims in Kenya. She is also a social media influencer. She's a moderator, she's a Qatrit um, MC, and she's a conversation curator. And the list continues. Aisha, she definitely wears many hats. Thank you so much for joining us today, Aisha. Thank you for having me here. I am so happy to be here, Farah and especially talking about self-care because that's like one of the things that is paramount in my life right now how are you doing i'm good how are you i am well it's so it's so amazing to have you today with me uh great so uh before we start i would like to quickly remind our viewers to subscribe to the channel and to our listeners to follow the podcast on the channel platform they're listening from so okay Aisha um, you wear so many hats <laughs> tell us a little bit about all the amazing things that you do amazing I think you've really summed it up well but my name is Aisha Khan as you rightly put it and I am <coughs> now a mother which I'm so proud to be and a mother to an eight-year-old baby I am a journalist by profession I am a social media influencer I am a communications expert I am also a moderator when it comes to high level events, when it comes to corporate events, I do that. So yes, Aisha can do anything and everything given the chance. Amazing. Aisha is, is a vocator. And, and honestly, and I don't think to have, I've told you enough times this, but you do inspire me a lot. Oh, you inspire me equally. <laughs> And uh, I, I just say, like, I call myself a hustler, like, you know, where you mm. can do anything and everything. Mm. As long as you're making an impact and mm. making some coins, I think mm. I can do anything. Yes, you yes. can. Yes, you can. Um, Aisha, what's your favorite month? My favorite month, wow. So my favorite month uh, used to be my birth, my birth month, but mm -hmm. it changed. Now my favorite month is February because my mom's birthday was in February 25th and God gave me my beautiful son in the month of February, which is the 10th of February. So it's a very special month to me because he took someone I loved and in the same month he came and gave me my baby boy. Yeah. That's beautiful. Um, and by the way, uh, I just read somewhere just yesterday. Yeah. Um, February is a very rare month for wow. birthdays. Wow. Yeah. So the people who are born in February are yeah. quite rare. <laughs> and they're very kind people. Mm -hmm. Very kind. Mm -hmm. In my interactions, whoever's been born in the month of February are very kind. And two of my special people are born mm -hmm. in that month. So, yes, February it is. What activity brings you most joy? I love working out. I love dancing. Oh my God, I love Zumba. You can see that I'm a hijabi here, uh -huh. but I love Zumba because it has really helped me in my life. You know, <clears throat> it's been that therapy. Like, I don't need a therapist per se. Not that I'm not saying therapy is bad, but I find my joy in mm. Zumba. I dance, I get to lose weight, mm. I get to feel happy, mm -hmm. I get to see other women. Mm -hmm. And that is just what makes me happy. And I wish every woman could try this out. That's beautiful. Yeah. I don't think so we enjoy as much um, doing uh, a lot of physical stuff. Yeah. We and, and it, it would be the most simplest thing, like dancing, Yeah, literally. You know, Farah, I came to realize, you know, when you move your body, when oh. you're active, I mean, mm. I love nature walks too. So you will find me in Karura Forest either having a walk, mm. uh, either cycling. So I love activity. I love working out. 
So for me, when I move, you know, there's endorphins, there's hormones that come mm. out and just keep you happy. So when someone asks me, you know, what keeps you happy all the time? I tell mm. them, I just move my body mm. and I go to places that make me happy. Life, life is full of depression if mm. you let it, you know, mm. be that way. But if you look for the joys and the simple things, I mean, Farah, imagine this. You wake up in the morning and you go for a nature walk. You, there are trees all around. I mean, it's just a hundred bob to go to Karura Forest and just make that time for yourself because if you do not work on yourself if you do not make yourself happy then no one's going to do it for you that's so true yeah no one will uh what uh would you say uh your morning looks like now that you're a new mom wow my morning starts very early it starts uh -huh. at seven o'clock where my son wakes up and you know, let me tell you something, Farah. As a mother, I have never felt like I have loved someone this much. Also, I've never felt like I've been this exhausted in my life. Okay? Mm -hmm. So my morning starts off where I'm very ex exhausted, of course. But it's also very beautiful to look at my son waking up in the morning at 7 o'clock. He's trying to stand so he will be jumping on us, you know, mm -hmm. doing stuff. I mean, so my morning starts with my son and then next goes to... You know, we had the prayers earlier in the morning before all this happens. Mm -hmm. And um, then my husband has to go to work. So I make breakfast for him. And mm -hmm. then my day starts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, So it has a lot of prayer. It has my baby. It has my husband. But I also make time for myself. I work out. Mm -hmm. And then I go on with my daily mm -hmm. activities. Yeah. I love that you mentioned you work out. You, you make time for yourself as yes. well. In this journey, if you don't make... I mean, everyone has a life. The baby has a life. The husband has a life. Mm. What about you? Mm. You take care of everyone, but you forget about yourself. And mm -hmm. that's what women do. Mm. But it's about high time that we also prioritize ourselves and put ourselves in the schedule. You know, other than sitting at home and saying, oh, I'm so fat. I've gained so much weight. I mean, do something about it. And, and physical activity is not only for weight. You know, it's also for mental. Mm. You know, look at the people who work out. They have very low rates of depression. But look at the people who don't work out, who don't move their bodies. Mm. The depression rate is very high. Yeah. That's true. How was your childhood like? Oh, wow. My childhood was very traumatic, if I put it very well because um i was born into a family where my mom was 44 years old and i she already had other kids who are about 20 something mm. then now she's getting this miracle baby at 44 she came to find out when she was three months she was in an abusive relationship i'm talking about 30 years in an abusive relationship with my father until today i don't know why she chose to stay but moving on i was born into this family and um i grew up seeing a lot they say children don't see children don't feel but i think children are little people with very big feelings and yeah so grew up and i remember very vividly in the morning our mornings would start with a lot of abuses a lot of violence i mean my brother and my father would be at each other my sister would always be abusive always <sighs> making my life hell you know, she would beat me. I'm talking of this Mwiko, you know, the Mwiko that we used to cook. She would beat me until it breaks. She would pull my hair and take me 360 degrees round. I mean, I lived that kind of a childhood every single day. I remember my mom was very kind, but she had to go and hustle at work. I would be left at home with the maid. I mean, I started school very early. Less than two years, I was already enrolled in school. And um, I was with a maid and you would find, you know, before my mom comes from work, my father just wakes up from nowhere and he starts saying, I'm going to beat this woman today. I'm going to kill her, you know. And then the maid says, run to the balcony and go and tell your mother not to come up today. There's going to be drama. And I tell her and she quickly goes and hides herself at the neighbor's house. And from there, we used to live like fourth floor in an apartment and he would come and want to throw her down from there. So as a child, you're exposed to all this trauma. Anyway, fast forward. Um, he fell really ill. I mean, there was once he got uncontrollable and big bus, a big, is it a truck, not a bus, a big truck came in and they took him and... 
you know, they had to sedate him because he was too wild. Next, you find yourself as a little girl, six year old, sitting in Madari Hospital as your father is on the bed and you see other crazy people. I mean, that's the kind of childhood I lived. And my father passed away. I thought that was the end of it. But no. Uh, luckily, my brother gets married to this woman who is now my ex sister in law, but someone very, very important in my life because she came in and she would, you know, make time for me. You know, the small, small things. I mean, from work, she would come bring me a fruit salad. When someone's trying to beat me, she's trying to save me. And she's just new into this family, which was again very toxic for her because they would fight her too and yeah my siblings didn't make my life very easy to live and i will never blame them now that i'm mature enough to know that mental illness farah is ill uh, is real and you find my father died of depression you find my siblings today are still there but are going through mental health issues and they are refusing they are in denial to get help you find such people are not able to maintain relationships because of what they saw and they're not bad people they're amazing people but without healing we become very toxic to other people out there so anyway Aisha is this smart girl but she's very timid she sees a man and she goes under a sofa and under, under a bed because I was scared of men I was scared of men because of what I saw and next you know you grow up being told you're so ugly or you're so dumb or you're so this you know again that is inflicting my confidence the confidence that I have today is as a result of growing up and I think I would say it's God it's God who knew why I my mom had to give birth to me at 44 as a miracle baby so going on my life was you know my siblings ever fighting ever violent ever abusive I mean in the morning our breakfast is abusers it is not food and I used to wonder what is wrong with this home like everyone's just fighting and screaming and you know like all these things and there's no respect for my mother and I, I didn't understand anyway along the way of course I had my sister-in-law and I had you know Sherry my very good friend who became my neighbor and became like my big sister you know and many other people who are in my life to shape me for who I am today because I would run away from the house and just go and have a break so I think I started self-care very early now that I understand it as an adult and luckily I I finished university uh, I mean I finished form four and I passed really well I wanted to become a doctor but again I was forced to get married at the age of 18 and I said no I'm not gonna get married because the women in my home are not respected you know they are looked down upon so why should I be the next one I need to get educated because I wanted to be the rich auntie I never thought like I'd get married though I used to pray for it I remember as a 13 year old I would sit and pray like God please make me very rich so I can remove my mother from this mess and grant me a good husband that will love me and understand me and cherish me for the woman that I am something I never got as a child Moving on, I had this uncle who is an angel in my life. Ever since I was a child, he would take time to, you know, talk to me. And he realized how smart I was. I didn't. And I remember he would tell me, which university do you want to go to? Where do you want to go? You know, and I would just be like, he's just a man, you know, like, what does he want from me? And I mean, I was traumatized. And next I got the opportunity, you know, one day when they were talking about the marriage stuff, Farah, I woke up and I was like, I'm not getting married. I'm going to look for this uncle. He's going to pay my school fees. So I took my sister-in-law and we rushed to his house. It was just in the estate. And I told him, look, I'm interested to go to university. You have said, and immediately he removed the checkbook and he said, where do you want to go? What do you want to do? And I remember I wanted to become a doctor. I wanted to travel to China, but my people were not agreeing. I got a full scholarship. But again, she's a girl. Who is she going to be with? I mean, you know, if it was a boy, I think he would be allowed to go and study. Anyway, I went to university and that was my turning point, Farah. I don't you know if you want to USC. take the lead from there. Yes, <coughs> university. In yes, I went to USIU mm -hmm. and I remember I told him I want to do journalism. Mm -hmm. Never did I imagine that I would be in front of this camera very confident because I was timid. I was scared, Farah. Like I, I knew I'm ugly. I knew I'm not worth of this life because of everything that was told to me. Mm -hmm. 
anyway i got to join university and that was my turning point where there was this lecture i mean at usi you have to do a lot of physical presentations and you know standing in front of 50 people mm. and this guy told me khan you're gonna do it and that is professor mochofi I, I pray he gets to hear this because every interview I go to, I have to talk about this guy. And I go there and this guy, you know, gives me so much confidence and I'm standing in front of 50 people and I'm talking. The first time in my li life I realized when I talk, you know, people actually listen to me. People are laughing. People are like interested to know what I'm talking about. And wow, that is when I came to realize that I have the power and the power lies in my voice and my personality. It was crushed as a child. But then the fact that God made me, you know, go to university because both my siblings do not have degrees or anything. I was the first in my family to get my degree. That was a miracle for me. And from there, you know, I joined the student council, the only Muslim girl. I won with a margin of 95%, the highest. And again, I was being bullied in school because they're like, you're just a freshman, meaning the first year, you know, you want to mm. get into leadership. Nobody knows you. And let me tell you, Farah, when you tell me I cannot do something, I'm going to do it 10 times to prove to you that I can do it. Not for you, but for me first. Because all my life, I have been crushed into this, you know, piece of... I don't know if I should say it, into this piece of shit all my life. But then right now, I don't allow anyone to do that to me. And fast forward, I graduated with an honors degree at USIU and that is when my journey began to finding out who Aisha is and all that I offer. That's so beautiful. I love how <clears throat> your journey started off so dark and yeah. hopeless. <laughs> It if was. I may say so. so yes. Um, and I wanted to ask you what were you were most afraid of as a child. And definitely you just answered that. You yeah. were afraid of men. I was afraid of men. <coughs> and also today I have an effect that has stayed in me. Like, you find when someone is doing my makeup, I will shake a bit. And I came to realize when I went for therapy, you know, mm -hmm. my therapist told me, Aisha, you have this because every time someone was, you know, going to like chapa mm. you, going to like beat you. And, you know, you'd always be this scared. And until today, I have a little bit about that, mm. you know, in me. And it's a constant journey into healing, Farah, mm. into healing, because we cannot become who, you know, we grew up being. There is a quote, and I don't think I can remember it really well. They say, it is not what happened to you, but is how you deal with what happened mm. to you. And that is a quote I live by. That's immensely powerful. Yeah. I love how you um, shaped yourself into this amazing continent woman that you are today. I wouldn't do it alone. I mean, the mm. people that I mentioned, and of course there are many other people, mm. but these are like my key but the people. Power, the power lied within you. Yes. But without support, I think I would not have made it this far. I feel like if my siblings also had amazing people in their lives to guide them, they would be better people today. But, for but it me, was the strength yes. within you. I and think, I I think still... it's God. <laughs> yeah. I would never like say it's me. I think it's God because at 44, a woman giving birth, I mean, in a traumatic situation. And then there's a girl that's born. That is me. There was I a reason. I think it's also what you were exposed to. Yes. When you went to university, yes. you met all these people. Yes. And you you came out from that environment and you're like, oh, okay, so this is also possible. This is exactly like, you know, it was the best gift my uncle gave me, you mm. know, my uncle Kareem, he gave me this opportunity and he told me one thing, I cannot remove you from that toxic environment. Mm. I cannot take you anywhere, but I can equip you with education mm. that will make you see the world in a very different way. And he told me, Aisha, then the world will be yours. God bless Uncle Karin. I hope you hear this. Yeah. I God bless you. God bless him. Uh, Aisha, do you think people are made for each other? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I told you I hated men, but <laughs> um, a lot of things changed. And I don't know if I should just talk. I'm a very big talker here. Yeah. Please do. And I think, yes. So um, people are made for each other. Farah, I told you at the age of 13, I used to pray and say, you know, I used to wake up at three o'clock. I remember and I'm crying 
telling God, please, I need a good partner. I need someone who's going to love me. I need someone who I'm going to build. I always envisioned having a family that I have today. Mm. And I remember very well in 2019, we were planning with my mom. So my mom would always tell me like, I need to be educated and not repeat what she went through. And she would always tell me like, when I close my eyes, I don't know who's going to be there for you. Like, it's going to be you and yourself. There's nobody for you. Like, don't have expectations of anyone. And she said, I don't have anything to leave behind for you. And I remember, you know, Farah, I know I'm digressing, but I remember that when I was going to university at times, I would not have money. I mean, my uncle would pay my school fees, but the transport, I need to cater for it. And my mom would sell her clothes to make me go to school. And when I go to school, everyone thinks I'm so rich. And I love that because I will never look like my problems. And I always tell people, like, go through what you're going through, but never look like your problems. As I'm sitting here, I've not slept the whole night. and But I cannot show you I look like my problems. I don't know if I look like I've not slept the whole night. Hell no. It's, it's about showing up. No. So going back to um, if people are made for each other. So the man, my husband now... Uh, gets into the picture I think I had gone through a heartbreak or something by then and I just finished university and I just find a text from someone hi so he's that guy you know on Facebook how you have people hi hello how are you he's that guy uh. <laughs> and of course Aisha would just ignore him like what does he want like you know mm. doesn't he get it like I'm not interested mm. anyway so he he keeps pursuing and one day I was with my sister-in-law the one I told you she's really played a huge part in my life that is Ashfa mm -hmm. Uh, we were just with her and my nephew and you know his colleague and the colleague said oh my god you're the famous Aisha Khan I was like wow okay and he's like yeah Zaman's always looking at your photos on Facebook and admiring you and I know you two are gonna end up together and I said hell no he's not my type so I've not even met a guy but I just concluded he is not my type and that's about it because I wanted to be a rich auntie you know Rich auntie making a lot of money and then showing up and spoiling her niece and nephew. That's what I wanted to be. I love this. I had, I had lost hope. I had lost hope in relationships. I mean, the people I met were just a mess. Mm. Anyway, the man comes into my life and for one year he's pursuing me. For one good year. When they say men are dogs, I'm telling you, this one... You, I don't know. He was just something else. Like, he would pursue me. Oh my God in every way possible and I remember I was going to Canada and after one year you know um was when I realized okay I like this guy and I want to give it a chance and I talked to my mom about it so we were traveling to Canada for me to go do my master's and my mom got very sick and there was no way I would go and leave her behind and I chose to stay back because I knew my siblings would not look after her well and I stayed back and the man and me still continued. And I remember I didn't have enough money to remove my mom out of the hospital. Like it was a struggle. I would go and, you know, look for money and try to, you know, remove her from the hospital. I'm talking about 700, 800, 1 million. And that happened like four times. But people really came through for me. They really came through for me. And the man would always be there with me. At 12 o'clock when we have to remove my mom and take her back home, the man is there with me. When I have to do calculations, by the way, I suck in maths and he's amazing in maths and I prayed for that by the way because I wanted my kids to be a bit smart in maths <laughs> the mom is amazing but like with maths I'm zero and yes God granted me he's a man and he would do the calculations and everything and my mom's situation kept on getting bad kept on kept getting bad and oh, the man waited for three years and my mom passed away in April 13th and he had already come and asked for my hand in marriage. And then my sister-in-law, my ex-sister-in-law took me in. I mean, she's amazing. She took me in. And when she took me in, Farah, um, you know, we had already set a date. Two months exactly after my mom passed away. That is in June 13th. I got married. And I don't know how it happened. I don't know. Like, when someone asks me, like, did you plan this thing? I had a wedding of 15 people. 15 people very small very intimate I mean I was still grieving this was my also mother. during the pandemic yes, right? I was grieving my mother and you know I got married alhamdulillah my life started on from there and when you said made for each other I, I, I come to realize now marriage is not about a big wedding it's about staying married 
and being consistent. I was grieving and this man, I would wake up at three o'clock and start crying for my mother. Like, I want my mother. And he has to sit with me. The next day he has work and he's trying to console me and making me feel like, no, it's okay, I'm with you. And you know, and honestly, he's the type of man that I prayed for at the age of 13. That's why I tell people, pray, it moves mountains. And God chooses your life for you not you to choose your life and he chose a man for me and this guy stuck through for me they say that men can't wait they're impatient and no i don't know about what's going to happen in the future but for now my man is amazing you know they say men are embarrassing but mine is amazing for now and i love it and cherish it and now we have a son and you know farah again are people made for each other when the man met me immediately on the first date he was like I want us to get married. And I was like, are you mad? The first day, no one says that. He's like, no, I want us to get married. I see this into marriage. And he said, our son will be called Zaish. Zaish is a combination of Aisha and Zaman. And at that time, I brushed him off really badly. But right now, we have Zaish. And that's a beautiful name. It has a meaning. It means uh, intelligent, powerful, uh, virtuous. You know, and that's why I say when things are meant to be, they are. And I strongly believe it because of I'm living it. Mm. Yeah. SubhanAllah. MashaAllah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just, okay. So now that you're married, yeah. uh, you're already, what, one year into marriage? No, two, two years. Two years. Yes. All right. So how often should a couple argue? Mm -hmm. or fight to maintain a healthy relationship i don't think there's any manual to this like today in the morning we had a fight and then in between the days someone calls and says sorry i mean it's always the man who says sorry but i'm not trying to be toxic i also say sorry where i feel like i have offended him mm. it, fighting is part and parcel of marriage or mm. any relationship like if you guys don't fight there is a problem mm. i think fighting makes relationships stronger Mm -hmm. And for me, I'll date it back to my pregnancy. So one year um, into marriage, I mean, again, it's a prayer I made. But it didn't happen exactly. Like, whatever I pray for doesn't happen exactly the way I want. But it does happen. Mm -hmm. So I remember uh, when we got married, we t before we got married, we talked about kids. And I said, look, after one year, I think we're ready to get a baby and, you know, whatnot. So I remember I had quit my job. And then I was working on my projects. And boom, I was pregnant. Three days before my anniversary, my first anniversary, I got to find out I'm pregnant. Farah, I cried. I cried so much because I envisioned being a very successful career woman before I got my baby. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's what I envisioned. Mm -hmm. but I got my baby and I remember the first four months were so hard because of the nausea. And then I started really missing my mom. I missed my mom a lot because that was my pillar. And right now I feel all alone. Yes, Ashfa is an amazing support system, but she also got married and had a life by then. And so I start asking myself, how am I going to do this thing? I'm panicking. And, you know, God bless my mother-in-law soul. Like she would cook for me and send me food. Mm -hmm. Like she's the only one who used to do that. And my friend Sherry would really try to come through. And by the way, I have this amazing friend. She's called Dr. Dury. And I think I need to mention her in this section because she was all the way in Tanzania. But... She was always on call. When I was in panic, I would just call her and cry, mm. cry my heart out. And I want to highlight this. As a young couple, there's a lot of pressure to get a child. I mean, when you go to a wedding, you know, when you go, when you see me on the road, ah, when is the good news coming? When is the good news? And they mm. literally look at your stomach. And there's so much pressure. But Farah, I feel that society should first empower this couple on knowing what is pregnancy. Mm -hmm. What is it having a child? Mm -hmm. Why do you think we have so many divorce cases? Because we want people to get married, get kids first, but it's a whole transition. Mm -hmm. And my message, I mean, through this, a young couple will get to know what I'm talking about. Stop getting into that pressure. Because let me tell you, when you get that child, it's between you and your husband, not the society. Yes, someone can come and hold the baby for like two minutes and that's about it. When they poop, when they want to sleep, it's you to deal with that work. Mm -hmm. Babies are a blessing. At that time when I cried and I don't want anyone to take me wrong is I wasn't ready to get a baby. I was not psychologically prepared to get this baby. But anyway, four months in, I was going through all this thing. And my friend Yuri was always on call. And that is why it's so important to have a support system around you. 
For me, I hated cherry during my pregnancy really badly. I would see in a supermarket and turn my face and go. I would lash out at her. I would write her really bad messages during pregnancy. And I mean, she was understanding enough not to respond to me rudely. Like she would take time and try to call me. And you know, she's not given birth. She's not married. So of course she would not understand me. But I remember at five months, two of my friends reached out to me, went for coffee and I started working out, started doing Zumba. That is when I started loving myself, loving my pregnancy. I started meeting mothers and be like, oh, it's not bad. Like pregnancy is amazing. Like, you know, I'm, I'm carrying life in as much as it was difficult pregnancy comes with a lot of difficulty in terms of your hormonal moods your changes your body change. there's a lot to it and my relationship was really tested like i would lock the man out of the house i would shout the man like i would not want to see his face i would not want to sleep with him i mean sex is a very big problem in in a lot of relationships now with the kind of work i'm doing which i will come to and I wasn't able to do that but I would carry him to the gynecologist and be like I'm not able to do it and the doctor's like relax it's normal it happens my friend who's a doctor Dr. Giri would keep assuring us and reassuring us talking to the both of us so basically she became like our counselor and she was able to relate because she's a mother of two and she's a doctor she's also done psychology and you know that kept us going that kept us going and yeah, Farah, then I ended up getting on week 39 and being, again, another surprise and being told that um, the baby needs, I need to be induced. And I was like, no, my baby has to come on 25th of February, not 10th of February. And they're like, it's not in your hands. I was like, okay, so I get induced. And of course, I saw a lot during my pregnancy. Pregnancy, I lost a lot of friends, by the way. I got mm. abused. I, I will agree that I was a bit petty. But now that I am on this side, I'm like, I feel like there would have been more understanding. Mm. Sadly, there would were you, not. Yeah. Uh, wow. You, <laughs> you really um, brought it so much to light right now. Yeah. Would you say that if you are, um, like Nedi, you went, told you if you went for pre marriage counseling, yeah. would you be better prepared to handle your pregnancy? I think so. That is one of the things that we didn't do. Mm. I think so. But thank God, like, for my amazing partner who mm. really stuck the race, mm. you know. And for someone out there who is now a new, uh, newly wedded couple and they're yeah. maybe just found out, and yeah. maybe they're, they're going through some even more times, you mm. know, um, trying to understand each other, trying mm -hmm. to understand this transition already. What uh, would you tell them? Like, what, what should their priorities be right now? So their priority should be both of them right now. And of course, when you're carrying a child, I think they could seek therapy. But if they have amazing friends around them mm -hmm. who can guide them, especially people who have been through this journey, it's going to mm -hmm. be easier. But again, mm -hmm. everyone's journey is different. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of judgment out there. You know, when I say it's to keep my husband out of the house, like you can ask me, how dare you do that? Mm -hmm. But it happens. It's even It happens even on worse levels. Mm -hmm. But then these are things you're not told about, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So I would just say, like, seek help. Mm -hmm. Seek help before your baby comes here because there's a lot in the journey mm. so for me again i was not prepared i go in my labor again was not prepared mm. i thought i'm gonna push because mm. i was very active i danced on the last day by the way mm. and i remember having shower man juice before i was induced like i loved food oh my god i loved it. and i still love food <laughs> uh, and on that note you know there's a pretty cupcake here you know courtesy of farah farah thank you so much for this beautiful cup cupcake and of course my coffee here but i think i'm so engrossed in this conversation that i'm gonna take a break from this and after this i'm gonna have you know the the food that's just yeah. in front of me so yeah farah i go into labor uh, I was induced and before that night I was nursing a woman in labor mm. and I remember the nurses were so rude she even fell down before she went to give birth and it was so traumatic for me you know mm. like I'm like oh my god is this gonna happen and I remember by the way me I fight for my rights and I said if my husband's not gonna be here I'm not gonna give birth and they listened to me Mm. and so I remember before I gave birth I was really huge and they were like are there twins inside there oh. like you know they would say in Kiswahili like Muhindi mm. and I was like no 
and that's something like you know when you're pregnant people judge the size of your stomach to see how big or small the baby's gonna be mm. anyway moving on i met a friend there we were in labor together and then i remember i was rushed for cs because there was some negligence that went on that night and i was rushed for cs at 12 o'clock and i knew i'm gonna die so i tell my husband bye see you like you know this is the end today i, I want to tell you something but until i'm dying that's when i'm gonna tell you like i'm gonna disclose something to you and he's like are you leaving money behind <laughs> So I remember we were joking and I need to know. Yes, I, like, I need to know. What is this? Are you leaving a will behind? And it's like, stop being stupid. You're going to make it. And I'm like, no, I'm going to theater. Like I never researched about CS. Mm. And this is something that I want to tell a new mom, you know, never think that your labor is going to go as you thought. Mm. I thought, man, I'm going to ace it. I have eaten pineapples. I have eaten dates. I have done exercise. What else do you need? Mm. You know, I'm fit for this. I'm so strong. I even ate ugali and sukuma before i went to push mm. like before i went into the whole induction thing because i was ready like mentally mm. and then i found myself in theater and i remember the doctor telling me aisha what kind of music do you want i was like bloody hell music i want to die like mm. i'm going to die he's like don't think such things and I, at that point i was like i wanted to tell him to put the quran for me but then mm. You know, as a Muslim, you don't impose your religion on other people. Mm -hmm. and so I let them do the music and stuff, but I kept on praying. I mm. was praying so hard for God to just keep my baby safe mm. and myself. And there I had Zaish cry. For the first time in my life, I was, I cried. I literally cried, like just listening to this baby cry. Mm. I was like, oh my God. And then, you know, in the theater, they just bring the baby for one minute. And then you see the baby like this. And then they're like, it's a boy. And I was like, oh my God, is that a baby? Like from me, is that a baby? Did I do that? <laughs> so birth is so beautiful, but so hard at the same time. It's mm. a beautiful chaos. Birth, motherhood, this whole process is a mm. beautiful chaos. And I feel like when women are supported, it makes it easier. Now, moving on to my postpartum, I, in the same hospital, the girl who I was in labor and everything, she also went in for an emergency CS. She lost her baby, 4.2 kg baby. Oh, no. The hospital was really chaotic oh, no. and I got the news and I was in distress. I mm. cried mm. because I don't know who this woman is, but I met her for the first time in that hospital. Mm. And then there, my baby's there, you know, and then the recovery process of CS. I mean, people talk about CS being, you know, the easier way out. You see Vera Siddika doing it and, you know, she looks okay. She's walking and winging it. My friend, it's not a joke. Mm -hmm. It is a surgery that goes seven layers deep to get that baby. It is a huge risk. But when you're out of there, you still have to look after yourself and the baby. Mm. So for me, the recovery was very hard. I mean, because I think I was not mentally prepared and no one talked to me about it. Mm. So I remember going home and, you know, two weeks later, people are coming and telling me, why aren't you breastfeeding the baby? And I'm like, excuse me, I don't have milk. To my dismay, the nurses had not done their job to come and put the baby on my breast for for the baby to suckle mm. and start the whole process. And for CS, I mean, because I went through induction and CS, uh, the milk production, you know, would take more time because of all those medications mm. now that I know better. Mm. So I went into distress. I think three to four months postpartum, I was in distress. I would cry. Why am I not able to breastfeed my child? Mm. Am I not a good mother? Like, mm. you know, all this. And it happens to a lot of women. Yes, it does. But because of the support system I had, and that is my husband, you know, my mother-in-law also would really try her best. I feel I made it through. And from that far out, again, God plans everything. Mm. Right now, I have created a safe space on Instagram mm -hmm. where I just started sharing my story. I shared my story and people started now coming out with their stories and like, oh my God, is this what women go through? Mm. Oh my God. And I was so grateful because I said, in as much as I felt like I've gone through so much, I feel like other people have gone through worse than me. We should have this point where we are grateful. Mm. And from there was my turning point into loving my family, my husband, my baby, and being so grateful. In as much as things didn't go my way, I'm able to have this too in my life. Mm. And how can I be a better mother? Because if I become depressed today, my children will be affected. And I remember there's a guy now who told me. So by the way, there's another misconception about postpartum depression. So I had reached a stage where I was not sleeping at night. I was distressed full on. And my doctor prescribed melatonin. Melatonin is a drug that helps you. It's, it's actually 
something your body naturally produces mm. but because it was low the doctor wanted to i think i don't know if i'm saying it the right way like medically but it's something that makes you sleep mm -hmm. and makes you feel good mm -hmm. And I remember going to the chemist and saying, I need this medicine. And the lady was like, when you have postpartum depression, like, do you have postpartum depression? And I was like, oh my God, postpartum depression. That's a very big word, you know, like, I just want to breastfeed my child. And Farah, thank God I took those medicines because if I didn't, today we'd be talking of another different story. I was losing my mind. Mm and yeah moving forward right now the safe space on instagram on my page has attracted a lot i mean i started when my page was at four thousand. right now i'm almost at ten thousand. Six months in of just motherhood content that's uh that's the duty of sharing your strength yes and you i share keep it. sharing my story on social mm -hmm. media and i've also created this lives instagram lives that i do of course i want to make it more professional like this i'm getting ideas um where i'm gonna be hosting mothers i'm gonna be hosting professionals you know i want to include men in this conversation because mm -hmm. parenthood is not all about the mother we talk about motherhood but can mm -hmm. we start talking about parenthood in as much as we bear the brunt i feel like it needs to be done together mm. for me you know i share how my husband is changing a diaper how my husband is carrying the baby how my husband lets me sleep because these are things a taboo in our, our, our community you know mm. you go out say, oh my god you have such a good husband i'm like that is his duty like who told you he's such a nice like he's an amazing man but like why do we glorify these small things and make the man look so good i mean what if i wasn't changing the diapers as a mother i would be called a bad mother right so why can't we say he's a bad father? Like, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I try to use my page by creating content and like teaching people like, mm -hmm. come on, man. Like I had a post yesterday about life after having a baby. It's not an easy thing. Mm -hmm. It's not. I mean, you both get ex exhausted. Your life is not the same. Even intimacy is not the same. But then you guys have to realize that you two need to take this break communicate you know be empathetic towards each other mm. help each other create your time because one day these kids will go big you will be the two of you and also the type of environment you're creating for this child mm. i went through childhood trauma would i want to put my son through that no. no so i have to communicate with my partner if we feel like shouting at each other can we do it when the kid is not around you know, can we find? So what we did is we took our eight month babe, old baby to my mother-in-law's house on a Sunday and we just had the day to ourselves. It was the most amazing thing ever. When we went back to pick him, we were so excited to see him. Aww. And, and that's what I want to say. Take breaks, you know, go for movies, mm. go for, I mean, if you don't have the help, then hire it. I have an amazing nanny. That is why I'm sitting and doing this podcast here. Mm. But if I didn't have support around me and I want to be the mother, the superwoman, I will burn out. Mm. And this is what people don't understand. Love your children, but stop, you know, glamorizing all this to the point you become burnout and you don't even love yourself, mm. you know? Do you want your child to remember like, you know, oh, my mother was always running around us, was looking up after her, our ass. But when you look at the mother, she's exhausted. She doesn't know when was the last time she actually went for a massage. When was the last time she did something for herself? When was the last time she even thought of, you know, just looking after herself? Mm. She doesn't remember. And I get such DMs where women are messaging and asking me, Aisha, how are you loving yourself? I think it comes with self-awareness. And a lot of healing. Mm, Until lot. today, Farah, I heal and heal and heal. I mean, mm. there are days I break down. I am a normal human being. Mm. I rest, by the way, resting. If as a mother you don't rest, I mean, you can give me 101 excuses as to why you don't rest. But when you don't rest, you become this irritable person. You know, you're shouting, you're cranky. I mean, that's not what we want our children to see. Mm. It's normal if it happens, but you should always apologize. So for me right now, I'm really getting into child psychology. I'm getting into learning more about what mothers are going through, you mm. know, and all trying to work <coughs> with organizations, you know. For example, FGM, if someone, a woman who's gone through FGM, what is birth like? So I really want to take my motherhood content and go you know, to the villages. Mm. I want to do it also here. I want to do it everywhere. And I think social media is so powerful. That's what it I'm is. doing. It definitely and of course, is. I'm looking to work with brands who, you know, want to work with me as a momfluencer. I'm not only a momfluencer. I also call myself like just a normal content creator. 
as a Muslim girl and a Muslim mm. woman, I relate to the problems of my society. And I feel like I'm a great representation of them. That's amazing. Yeah. And, and I wish you all the best for Thank you. this new journey that you'll be Thank on. Thank you. Thank you so much. I should, uh, when you look into the mirror today, do you love what you see? Oh, yes. Initially, when I just gave birth, I hated what I saw. Oh my mm -hmm. God, I hated it because your body changes. You know, mm. I'm talking about really graphic stuff. Like, mm. oh, like what is this? You know, again, I was 65 pre-pregnancy. And mm -hmm. right now, like when I gave birth, I was 91. And then right now I am at 77 kgs. Mm. It's been a transition for me. I had a really big baby. But when I look at my beautiful baby, I'm like, oh, it was worth it. And, you know, we're going to work out. We're going to get back there. And... You know, it's about loving your mom body. Mm. You know, this is my mom body. And if anyone says I'm fat or whatever, my kid doesn't see me as fat. My husband doesn't see me as They love me for who I am. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean I stay fat. I need to work on myself, you know, for myself first mm. before for anyone else. So when I look at myself, I see a lot of growth. I love myself. Like, I love myself with all my flaws because I feel like I've come from so far. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we want to complain like things are not as we want. But look at your journey. Where have you come from? Mm -hmm. And where are you going? If I did not go through all these things that I've gone through today, I would not be sitting here to talk about my journey. Mm -hmm. But because of what, you know, my life, you know, presented to me, that is why I'm here. I'm healing. And I love, like, I feel like after motherhood, I don't care about anyone, Farah. Before, I would care. Like, if you tell me something, I'm agitated, you know, like, why did she say that? But right now, I'm like, I don't have time for small talk. I'm mm -hmm. here to walk the talk. I'm here to make money. I'm here to make an impact for my family. Mm -hmm. And that little child and my husband comes first before anyone else. What should you say is the most important lesson to teach a child? My most important lesson to teach my, si my child is, number one, to love himself. Mm -hmm. I want to leave him with self-confidence. That is what I didn't have as a child. That's why people would come, step on you, tell you stuff. But I want my little baby Zaish to know that he is amazing. He's an amazing little boy. I want to teach him about emotions. Mm. It's okay for men to cry. It's okay for men to talk about what they're going through. Mm. We're living in this toxic era where our men do not talk about their problems. The suicide rate of men are higher than women. Mm. You know, why? So I want to be his first teacher and I just want to let, I want to nurture all his talent. Imagine if I knew I had a voice and I was this confident as a child. Where would I be today, Farah? Mm. I think I would be flying up and above. Not that I'm not where I want to be. Of course, I'm not where I want to be. I'm working towards it. But I feel like if I instill, for example, right now, I'm teaching Zaish how to swim. Because mm. I realized he loves the water. Mm -hmm. And right now, we have a partnership and I take him to swim. So by the age of one year, he will be floating. And tomorrow, he can win the Olympics, for all I know. Yes. But it's about mothers really taking the mental health of their children very strongly and instilling virtues. You're the first teacher. In as much as you will take them to an international school, but if at home you cannot give them a conducive environment to grow, then you're wasting your time. So that is the gift that I want to give my child. Yes. So that when I'm not here tomorrow, I have left something in him mm. that nobody can take away. Difficult. Because his mother has kept a strong foundation for him. That's amazing. And again, my husband plays his part. Like, I feel like I don't think there would be a better father than Zaman for Zaish. Because when I'm sick or, you know, we take turns even when I'm not sick. But some days I'm like, today I want to sleep. Like, you deal with it. And you find Zaman will be awake with the baby and has work in the morning. But for a man who has an excuse, oh, I have a job tomorrow to go to. Then I don't know. Like, when you prepare to get a child, be pre prepared to be there. Mm. Full on. What is something in people that you absolutely dislike? So number one, I hate dishonesty. I am a very straightforward person. I don't like something about you. I'm going to tell you. And I have realized it, it, it brushes on people really badly because they don't like to hear the truth. Mm. So I like someone to be bluntly open with me and tell me, you know what, like, for example, I tell you, Farah, you know, um, I'm planning to do this, 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 can you help me? And you say, yes, I can help you. And then just a few minutes, like a few days go by, there's no response from you. It's like I'm begging you to give me an answer. Like, don't tell me you're going to come through when you're not going to come through. Mm. That's, I hate that. I mean, even in business, in 
working with people i hate someone giving a commitment and not coming through like just don't give me a word cuz i love honesty mm. that's what just that and instead of talking about me to someone else please come and tell me to my face cuz if i hear it from someone else it's going to be bad i just cut you off i don't fight all right um i see you meeting someone for the first time and you have a label on you okay a warning label okay <laughs> what do you want it to read wow approach with caution because <laughs> it's danger here <laughs> Why did I know that? <laughs> I think I'm too predictable. Am I not? No, no. I yeah. love it's it's your fierceness. Yes. I love how you are protecting your energy. Yes. You're protecting right your now. You will right not now. access. You will not have access to me. Number one, if you're not growing me, or I'm not earning any money. Mm. There are two things. My peace of mind is very paramount, mm. and I would choose peace of mind over money any day right now. I love it. I love that. I love that. Not many people have that um ability to believe in themselves so much to to protect their space and their I remember, remember it's been a journey yes, where I didn't yes. believe in myself and I went through a lot of life mm. uh, life through a lot of lemons but I think God has enabled me to make lemonade That's by what I, I, providing a support system mm. to me you know amazing people I mean Sherry is still in my life till today Dury is in my life my mm. ex sister in law played such a big role in my life mm. my uncle like I mean there are people that God sent as angels you know when you talk about angels in human form mm. I have experienced that mm. those are my people like through thick and thin But I, I will, I will still add on to that and yeah. say there is a fierceness in you. That I think there is a purpose, yeah, right? There is a fierceness. There is a purpose. You. I was born to do something great, and I'm still discovering what that is. I show one thing you want to accomplish before the curtain falls. Before the curtain falls. Wow. <sighs> Number one. I want to be a happy woman always. full of peace of mind. I want to be a Muslim Oprah. I admire Oprah and I want to be a Muslim Oprah. That's not going to be recognized in Africa but the world. I want to show that a Muslim woman covers her hair but not her brains. Mm. And I feel like that is my purpose. And another thing before, you know, the curtains close, I want to live behind a happy family. I want to live behind children that I have instilled so much values in that when I'm 6 feet under, mm-hmm. these kids will be a representation of me. They will be praying for me mm-hmm. and they will keep doing good in the world as a reflection of myself. Like that said Hadaria. Yes. You know, But it's not it's what you give your children, it's mm. what you leave in them. Mm. And that is my fight. I, I want to die and I want to have so many people come to my funeral and they're praying and they're like, you know, she made an impact to our lives. That is what I want. I don't think there's anything this world is just a journey that we pass through and mm. It's it's really about what you leave behind. I mean, even the mm. watchman that you smile at and mm. you leave a good word, you know. Mm. And I'm also trying. I mean, I think one bad character that I have, I'm very straightforward. It's a bad thing and a good thing. I mean, because mm. I can't take nonsense from anyone. Like I just put you in your place. Mm. And I think I'm learning to be more diplomatic in that sector mm. because people just can't take it, mm. you know. <laughs> so if I tell you, Farah, I don't like this behavior. You always tell me you're going to do something for me, but then you go missing in action. Mm. Like, why do you do this? Mm. Like, can you work on yourself? But then you want to get defensive and fight me, you know. And I'm like, wow. But that's the world. You learn who to tell and who not to tell. Yes, yes. And that's the matter, and you move on. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. And when you ask, uh, uh, when you mention Muslim author. Yes. Uh, can can you uh, perhaps uh, share what percentage of it have you achieved already? So uh, I'm lucky enough. After I graduated from uni, I got my first job in an Islamic TV station and mm. hosted my first show. I mean, people think that I have done this work for ages. I have not. I had no idea I had the talent. But the producer of that show is someone who believed in me, mm. and I mean. 
you know she saw talent in me and she nurtured that talent and i will always be appreciative to this one producer who you know believed in a very young talent i was what 20 what that was all the way in 20 18 i started working mm -hmm. my first job at 2018 yeah. until today whenever i walk people remember me from that show so i used to interview inspirational muslim women mm. right now i'm struggling to get myself back and create a brand of my own mm. and i will accept i'm at that stage but you know what we're gonna rise and we're gonna be yes. something i mean oprah has a story and i need a story too i mean i can't just make it then i don't have a story to tell so you must go through a lot of hurdles in life so that mm. when you make it, there's an inspirational story you're leaving behind. Yes. So yeah, so right now, of course, this has challenged me to get my my <clears throat> my podcast up and running. Of yes. course, first all things motherhood, but I have a lot in store and mm. people should just stay tuned. Definitely, yeah. definitely. Uh, all right, so we are coming to the uh, closing end of the I will hang out yeah. <laughs> and just leave a shot to him. Never have I ever. Okay, wow. So if you have, okay. I want you to take a bite of the cupcake. Oh, no wonder this cupcake was here. Yeah. It's very strategic. Okay. <laughs> and if you haven't, then you don't need to take a bite. Okay? Okay. All right. So the first question, never have I ever forgotten my script just before the camera rolled. So I have, you have to bite it? Yes. Oh my God, this is so messy. But yeah, this cupcake is so nice. It looks so pretty. So you have, oh wow. I have, oh my God. Sometimes mm -hmm. you just go blank. And I tell people, it's not a one take kind of a thing. It took me a long time to, I think right now, my first take is what I love the most. Like mm -hmm. when you make me do takes, I go blank. Like, mm. I just don't have that vibe to it, but I have. I love that. Oh, wow. Uh, never have I ever cheated in an exam. I, I have. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a saint. Oh, wow. Uh, <clears throat> never have I ever fumbled during a live event. Fumbled, wow. Mm. I have, but I know how to pick myself up. Oh, I need yeah. to learn that. <laughs> I need to learn that. Uh, never had I ever lied to a law enforcement officer. Did I deal with that? I have. Let me tell you something. Hey, <laughs> I have a story. We have stories. <laughs> I have a story. So, it was COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, no, curfew. Uh -huh. I was newly married and... Mm -hmm. I loved spending time at my in-laws place, you know, getting to know stories from his aunties and stuff. And we would be late. Oh. And then we got caught oh. at the police station, the Mutaiga police station, and they put us in. And I pretended that I was pregnant. Like, let me go, Nikona Mimba. You know, I'm a very big actress. But they didn't let me go. But I lied. They told me that I'm going to give birth there himself. Oh. <laughs> I love this. Oh, God. I say it's so messy. I love this. Never have I ever left someone on red. I have. I mean, if you're being uh, stupid, I will leave you and read. <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna finish this cupcake. <laughs> yes. All right. Um, all right. Uh, yeah. I, <laughs> oh, well, that's the end. Man, I, I love you. I love you for all the tales. <laughs> all right. So now I'm going to give you a short quiz. Okay. And uh, it's it's basically uh, it's called kokoloji. Okay. Kokoloji is a Japanese word, and it's okay. uh, the study of the mind. Okay. So I'll give wow. you a few scenarios okay. with uh, multiple choice um, choices. You choose one, and then at the end, I'll tell you what they meant. Okay. All right? Let's do this. Okay. Let's do that. So the first one, mm -hmm. you're reading stuff in the living room with. While someone is knocking on your door, mm -hmm. through the cat's eye, you see a stranger. Mm -hmm. According according to the way he dresses, the guy is uh, must be a technician. Okay. So, what kind of a technician is that? Mm -hmm. A. An ele electrician. B. Plumber. C. Air conditioner. Uh, technician. Or D. Television or stereo technician. 
um, B, plumber. Okay. Um, number two. Uh, you're a superstar allowed to release a new album. Okay. What do you want for the album cover? A, a beautiful landscape. B, cartoonish picture. Mm -hmm. C, abstract picture, something artsy. Yes. Or D, a picture of yourself. <coughs> I'm launching what again? An album. You're a rock star. Uh, I will choose something arty. C. Okay. I love it. Um, so the next question. Your boss told you to cut a piece of paper into half. Mm -hmm. So how will you cut it? A. Cut it in straight, in a straight line. Mm -hmm. B. Cut it in a wavy line. Just the line. Uh -huh. C. In a zigzag line. Mm -hmm. Or D in one curvy line. My boss. Hey, yeah. that is perfection. A straight line. Straight line. Yeah. Mm, they're not what they seem. <laughs> so don't depend on the description. They're not okay. what they seem. Okay. All right. So number four. This one's a bit dark, but uh, the the interpretation is quite different. Okay. So uh, I'm sorry for this question. Um, if you have to commit suicide. Which way would you prefer? Mm -hmm. um, shoot, shoot yourself. Mm -hmm. D. Destroy yourself. Um, C. Hang yourself. Or D. Jump off the building. Wow, those are really adventurous. Wait, is there any? What was B again? Overdose. I think overdose. Like, what's safe? Like, these other things are scary. All right, all <laughs> right. Okay, and uh, the last one. Which part of the cake? Are you usually eager to eat? Cake. cake yeah. Mm. A. The strawberry part. D. The uneatable decoration part. C. The sugary decoration part. D. The chocolate part. Or E. The decorating wafer. The strawberry. I am a fan of strawberry. Oh my god, I love strawberries. Oh, okay. Alright, so now it's time to check your answers. The mm. first one, this technician. You chose a plumber, which means, um, so the question stands for um, the problem in your family that you try to ignore. Okay, so D is understanding, a feeling of understanding within the family. B. Yeah. Yes, and I think it's, it's right. It's like, right. I understand them for who they are and I never judge them. I think they're amazing people, but just need a lot of healing. Mm. So I understand them for the food they are and I don't judge them. I mean, I was but very they don't bitter. Understand I was very bitter against them, but then they don't understand me, mm. of course. I am the black sheep of the family. Mm. I choose to break generational curses so I cannot be loved. Number two, um, the rock star, your artsy album cover. Yes. Yeah. The question stands for what you see the most charming attitude in yourself and would like to express it to everyone. So wow. you chose an artsy picture, which means you're skillful and very talented and very creative. Um, that is so true. <laughs> I, I wouldn't know that, but yeah, it's good to no, know. No, that's true. Okay, number three, mm -hmm. uh, for cutting the paper by your boss, and you chose A. Um, the question stands for the method in which you choose to end a relationship. Okay. And A, you said straight, you, uh, which means you end it right away, no regret. Yes. So when I end a relationship, I will never look back. Be it a friendship, be mm. it a relationship, I feel like what's gone is gone and I cannot unsee what I saw. So I'm All very right. straight with that. That's true. All right. And then the fourth question, which was the dark question. Now this question actually stood for how you manage your money. I'm very bad in management of money. Yeah. And you chose D, which means you are a businessman and oh. know how to earn money from anything you want. Okay, that, that is, is true. true. Yeah. That is very true. Like, I can monetize uh, something. Yes, you can. Makes the sense. But money one. management, I need some help. <laughs> <laughs> I can spend oh, it very badly. We all need help there. <laughs> yeah. So the last one you said uh, about the cake. Um, this question stands for your attitude. Okay. And you chose a uh, strawberry, so your life is based on morality. You will not do anything against righteousness. Yes, if it is against my principles, 
I will not choose it. I'm, I And I have a short story to this. I'm sorry, I'm such a storyteller. But um, there was a chance I was getting to be a news anchor in one of the stations in Nairobi. And I had to sleep with a man to get that job. And I said, no, I'm not going to do it. Let it go. Let it be. I don't need to sleep with any man. The day it is mine to be on national TV, I will be on national TV. And I know that day will come. Even if I'll be 40, 50 years old, if God is going to give me that life, I will be there. But I never compromise who I am to fit in to what I want to be. No. And as much as people are not going to know, but my conscience cannot allow it. And why do we do it? For fame? For money? Mm. No. If it's not the right way, then it's the highway. And I just put it as simple as that. I love that. Thank you for ending it on such a strong note. Thank you for having me. This was such a lovely, lovely session. And honestly, I think I loved this cupcake session. Like, it's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in and uh, watching this episode of the South Korea Chat with Huara was not sponsored, but it could be. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to support us, do share this uh, podcast, this show on social media, leave a rating, leave a review down below. And if you want to tip us, uh, do um, uh, tip me on my coffee page. Um, yeah, I guess that's it for now. And all the links will be in the description box for our viewers and for our listeners. Check the show notes. Um, yeah, this has been Farah Khalif. And remember, love you always.